Well, it is seven o'clock, so I think we should go ahead and uh, get, get started. Uh, well, first off, um, I want to thank all of you for attending um, the Ohio Dairy Trail 101 webinar. Um, I'm Matt Simpson. Um, I'm on the Ohio Dairy Trail board, and I'm, uh, I represent the Delaware County section of the trail. Um, the Ohio Dairy Trail 101 webinar this evening um, is going to be all about uh, helping you plan either a day, weekend, or week-long trip along the Ohio Dairy Trail. Um, you're going to get all kinds of great information about uh, the website, um, all the resources that are out there for you, and a lot on our mapping system, both paper and um, digital interactive maps. Um, so before I introduce our speakers, I do have a uh, poll I'm going to share with you folks. Um, if you want to fill it out, it's got several questions just about where you're from, what kind of cycling you do, whatnot. So I'm going to share that. So you should see a, a screen asking you questions, hopefully. Looks like we're getting some folks uh, submitting, so that's great. Good, yeah, it did show up. Okay, excellent, great. Um, well, this evening we've got uh, well, a couple of things. One, we are going to uh, record this uh, webinar, so if you have a friend or you want to re-listen to it to pick up some information, we will um, save that and put it out on our YouTube channel. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll also keep everybody muted just so we can eliminate them and minimize background noise too. So appreciate you keeping yourself muted if you can. Um, with that, uh, I wanna introduce our two speakers. We have uh, Jody Zoranen. Uh, Jody is a longtime advocate of the Ohio Deer Trail over, over 10 years. Uh, for the last four years, she has been um, one of our board members. Um, and just recently she has was hired as our new um, executive director. Um, Jody has um, a ton of experience with marketing. Um, she helped with our website, um, social media. Um, she also has a, a background in finance and um, in public administration. So she really fits in very well as our new director. Um, in addition to her work elements and efforts, um, she also uh, is a cyclist. Um, she doesn't consider herself a long distance cyclist, although she's done the GOBA, which is the Great, um, Great Ohio Bicycle Adventure. She's done it eight years in a row, so that's uh, quite the accomplishment. Um, so um, we're happy to have her speak this evening. And we also have uh, Bob Niementhal. Uh, Bob is also one of our board of directors on the Ohio Dairy Trail. Um, Bob lives in Oxford, Ohio and is a mechanical engineer by trade. Um, but what he's really known for here on the Ohio Dairy Trail is our mapping. Uh, Bob is pretty much our expert when it comes to the route. Um, he can probably street by street give you directions without the map in front of him. Uh, he knows it that well. Um, he also uh, manages and our, is our ride director for our Moffitt Memorial Ride um, that we do annually. Um, and he, he's, he's also a cyclist. He's done the whole Ohio to Erie Trail twice since 2014. So we're excited to have those folks, Jody and Bob, speak this evening. Um, so looks like I'm gonna end the poll and then we're gonna let Jody get started with uh, presenting some of the resources on our website. I saw the results for a second there. <laughs> yeah. I'll see if I can find the results. Um, but I think, Jody, go ahead and um, start on that. Yeah, go for Let it. Let me talk and then I'll start to share in case I. Um, Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Jody Zoranen and yes, I've been involved with the trail for 10 years, but just this month I became the new executive director. Our lovely Lisa Ferris is moving on to the state parks. So she's been helping me uh, 
get acclimated and, and learn to wear the new hats here. So uh, some of the things that I'm going to be showing you in a second, but I just want to give an overview there. Uh, I'm going to take you to the plan your trip part of our website. And that's where you can order our four um, part map or guide set that is, uh, it's crucial to have as a, as a guide along the way. I'm also going to show you where you can find amenities and attractions on, um, on our plan your trip page. Uh, that's where you can find also lodging and campsites. And those are, they're updated all the time. Uh, well, not all the time, but yes, we're getting new ones each season. So it's a growing list. Um, we've got distance grids. That's something that people like to know if I start in Loveland and I, you know, ride to Xenia, how many miles is that? So that's something uh, that I can show you where to find that. And other support for cyclists. Uh, we also get the question a lot about, is there a place to leave a car at either end? And uh, we've got um, a couple options there. We'd like to see a few more, but we'll let you know where to find that information. And um, our friends along the trail, those are businesses that are nearby and um, they often offer a, uh, a, a a sweetener of some type, uh, you know, whether it's a free cup of coffee or um, another option that bicyclists uh, might enjoy. And, um, and then itineraries and dis destinations, that's another area I will show you. So let me hit share here. Are you seeing the plan your trip page? Yes. Yep. Uh, lovely. Um, so up here in the, uh, you can see, well, our website itself, and we'll also follow up with these links. They're in our, we'll put them in the chat at some point here as well. But our website is ohiotoerietrail.org. And then uh, the plan your trip, you can just get to it at the top menu. If you click plan your trip, that'll take you right to it. Um, and this is really the DIY for finding your way on our 326 mile trail or any section uh, thereof. You do not have to do the whole thing in, in, a, in one setting or in one, uh, fell swoop. Um, okay, so at the top here, you see the four set tour guide. So this, I'm going to zoom in here. If you hit the green link here, this will take you to the store where you can buy the, the map sets. Bob's going to talk a little bit, a lot more about this, but I just wanted to show you where you can find them on our website. We do offer a southbound, which is the Ohio River to Lake Erie direction, or the that's, northbound. That, that's the other way around. So, oh, I'm sorry. So northbound is the way with our name. So I, yes, thank you. So Ohio, you start at the Ohio River. So northbound is um, Ohio to Erie, southbound is Erie to Ohio. Thank you, Bob. Um, okay, let me, that's the great thing. My share block is right where I need to get back to, okay. <laughs> So the plan your trip, this, this is where you can find our printed guide. And then if you scroll down further, um, I'll take you to the interactive map. That's where Bob's gonna take over. So let me just continue to point out a few things here. Uh, yep, our tour guides are available at bike shops. Like um, some of the ones like Ernie uh, is on our board and his, uh, the maps are available at his bike shop in Maslin. Uh, people often ask, how much am I going to be riding on the roads? 
Um, our 326 mile route is mostly trail and every year the road portions gets less and less. Uh, I think we're down to 44 miles. Is that right, Bob? 44 miles of- actually, Yeah, actually it's uh, right now it's 44 miles, which is 14% of the trail. So 86% of the trail is dedicated bike trail. So the link here takes you to a file that hopefully you're seeing streets and roads on the Ohio Terry Trail. You, you still got the uh, shop up on the screen. Oh. I stopped sharing. Um, show the streets and roads. Yes. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. So, um, it's broken out by the four map sets uh, and it will tell you which part you're on roads. Uh, the street is a more, um, road is more a rural area and street is um, the urban. other, <laughs> yeah, urban or suburban. Um, and then, so at the bottom we see that 13.6% of the route is streets or roads, and that is equivalent to 44 miles. So this, we see this as success. That number keeps getting smaller every year. So um, the other big thing I wanted to show you on the plan your trip is where you can find, sorry, I, uh, Let me get back to that page. Okay, so you, we should be on the plan your trip page. Yep. This midway down where it says amenities and attractions. This is the part that I would say at least 50% of the questions that we get are about that. Where can I stay? Where can I eat? Where can I fill my water bottle? Um, so they each one of these links, immense attractions, OTET lodging and campsites, each of those links to a PDF of a document that has the names, addresses, and in some cases, the GPS uh, coordinates. So uh, that's, that's definitely something you're gonna wanna explore if you're planning your own trip or even attending with a group. Um, oh, I wanna show you where the parking information, this long-term parking in Cleveland and then in Cincinnati. And these are, um, they're mostly hotels, right? I believe that have um, made arrangements. So um, that's, that's, I think all I have to say about that. Is there anything else I should touch on before, Bob? No, I think we're good. All right. Go ahead and do you want me to, do you want to start on the map set? Yes. And I'll pull that up. Okay, great. I'm going to put myself on mute. Here's Bob Needenthal. Good evening, everyone. Uh, again, I looked at the list here. I noticed there's quite a few who were riding with us on the Moffitt Memorial Ride last year. So welcome. I'm gonna essentially give you a little overview of the map set itself. And as soon as Jody brings up the graphics for that, I will start. We're gonna to have to switch back to Jody to show her page. Okay, if you can blow that up a little bit, we can. This is, as Judy mentioned, this is the four part map set that we sell. 
you can see this is the newest edition that we do have. This is the 2021 edition that was printed last year. This happens to be the northbound version. You'll see the same thing. If it says southbound version on the front, then it's essentially at the same maps, but the navigation essentially goes the opposite direction. So it is essentially turn by turn navigation that's part of these trail maps. And so one tells you to turn right when you're going north and the other one will say turn left when you're going south. So uh, you can obviously use them going either way, but the, the text that's along with the map is written for whether you're going northbound or southbound. This is one of the pages inside the cover. This gives you a, pretty much an overview of where the trail starts in Cincinnati. And it runs essentially through four major cities. It starts in Cincinnati, goes through Columbus, goes through Akron, and ends up in Cleveland. And then we go through a lot of small towns and villages, a lot more than what you see on this map. Uh, I just got a note up in the corner says how often are the maps updated. The next version of this map will come out uh, this fall. It'll come out probably in September. Uh, as Jody just mentioned, currently there's 44 miles of streets and roads. There are currently three significant projects that are under construction. Those projects are expected to be finished, one in June, one in July, and the other one probably in, in August. Uh, when those three new projects are finished, that's going to take 13 miles of streets and roads off of the map. And then we'll be up to 295 uh, miles of, of trail and only 31 miles of streets and roads. And those who've ridden this before know that six or 17 miles of that street and road is what goes through from Fredericksburg up to Dalton. So over half of the total street and road will be that section. The rest of it is just little miles here and there where you're essentially going through cities or towns connecting one trail to another. Uh, you wanna make that a little smaller, Jody. Uh, you can see there's 24 different trails that we actually use as we go along the Ohio Erie Trail. Each one of those trails is essentially owned by a municipality, a park system, a, a county. Uh, one of them is a state park, a linear state park, and another one is a national park. So we have every form of organization owns these trails. Uh, in reality, Ohio Deer Trail owns absolutely none of these trails. We're essentially just the person, the people who have put the trails together, stitched them together essentially, and have built a trail that allows you to get from Cincinnati to Cleveland, essentially, like say, over 90% on bike trails come this summer. So we can go on a little further. This is really how, what you wanna understand in order to understand the map. As Jody mentioned, there's a mileage chart on each of the maps. This happens to be the South Central, section from Xenia to Columbus. And you can see that distance to Columbus is 57 and a half miles. And then all those other stops are either a, a village or a trailhead. So those are essentially places that you can typically go on the trail or off the trail if you're doing day trips or, or weekend trips. And then it gives you the mileage for each one. So. Essentially, if you wanted to start in Xenia, and if you rode out to the Wilson Road Park and back, you've just done a century ride. So that's how this map can be used. It shows you the distance between each of those, of those essentially stops along the trail. So that's, and there's one of those for each of the four maps. The other part, the legend at the top, if it's a white line, that's a street or a road. And if it's a black line, that's a trail. If the trail, if that black line has a green border around it, then you're in the right place. You're on the Ohio Dairy Trail. And where we leave a trail, if the white line has a green border on it, again, you're in the right spot. You're following the trail. Uh, there is one section right around Galena where we have an alternate trail. Uh, that's primarily to get into the city of Galena if you want to visit Galena because the trail 
The new trail system there essentially goes around Galena and a lot of people like to stop and eat in Galena, especially if you're on weekend rides. So this gives you a way to get into downtown Galena. The other key piece on this map uh, legend is those two arrowheads and the number three that you see. Uh, I'll explain that more in detail when we get to the map itself, but it's critical that you pick up where those arrowheads or markers are and what number shows between those markers. Because the trail maps are not to scale. And I'll show you that as we get to a map here in a second. So it's critical that you understand what the distance is between those markers. As far as symbols, essentially all these symbols really have something to do with riding a bicycle typically. And uh, so the first one we put on there was the bike shops. And as uh, Jody mentioned, on the plan your trip, there is a list of where all the bike shops are. We show them on the map, but you actually have addresses and phone numbers and possibly even uh, web websites for all the different bike shops along the trail. The, uh, the three things that you see in, around, with, uh, around the brown or the dark gray border is restrooms, parking and water. Uh, essentially those are what's at some of the trailheads. And the TH that you see then, because the map is, is small, we try to limit how many icons we put out there. So if you see a TH icon, that means that all three of those services are available. If you see just the restrooms or a water or a parking, then there's one or two of those, but not all three. And I'll show you that on the maps themselves. Same thing with the next line. Essentially, if you're doing more than a day trip, you're looking for grocery stores, gas stations, or essentially the convenience store and the restrooms at the gas station. The, uh, of course, restaurants and then hotels, motels. If you see an FS, that means that's a full service area. And in that uh, village or town or city, you're going to find all four of those services available. Again, we just used a shorthand so we didn't have to clutter the map with, with so many symbols. The next ones, again, are important for uh, camping and campgrounds. That's probably one of the questions we get the most uh, interest in. Uh, there are more of those every year, uh, but again, we could always use more. <laughs> and uh, some of them are primitive. If it's a primitive campsite, there's the word primitive underneath the icon. Again, there's more B&Bs and Airbnbs that are showing up that we're adding to the maps. Of course, everyone looks for the ice cream shops. Uh, we've got picnic areas listed also in some of the bigger towns. Uh, we note where there might be historical things of interest. Uh, again, anytime there's an emergency care pretty much adjacent to the trail, we'll show where that is. And kind of the newest one that we're seeing more and more of is these self-service bikes uh, stations where they have a pump and some tools that you can essentially do some self-repair if you uh, run into an issue along the trail. So you can look for that symbol along the trail as well. So the maps itself, this happens to be the, uh, this first part of the Little Miami Trail that comes out of Cincinnati on the east side of Cincinnati. So I'm gonna make that a little smaller, Jody. Little, make it small, oops. That's good right there. Hopefully people can well, make it a little bigger. That's good. You can see at the lower left-hand corner, it says Avoca Park, and then there's a TH. So that means there's a full service trailhead right there. Parking, actually a brick and mortar restroom with real flush toilets in that one and water source. And if you see that first orange marker in the corner, and then you see another one up towards Milford and you'll see the number three, that means it's three miles between that Avoca Park and where the Milford Trailhead is. If you look at the next mark up, you see a next mark, lower part of Miamiville. That's where you exit the trail to go to Miamiville. That's another three mile section. But then if you look at the next section, there's two arrows a little closer together, but it's got a six. That's a six mile distance between Miamiville and Loveland. And then this next one shows the next carrot at the top of, or arrow. That's where the Lebanon connector comes into the trail. 
and that's an eight mile section there. So you've got to pay attention to what the numbers say between the markers. Uh, if we were to, when there's actually, if you look at the four, all four of the maps, each map has six of these panels in a map. So the total number of maps on this whole uh, set of, of maps is 24. And, and each of these is essentially five and a half inches high and three and a half inches wide. Uh, what you can do is if you, somebody got enterprising and cut each one of these out and then link them together, because they actually link at the last, the first and last orange mark on the maps. So if you look at the, the bottom of S1, that lines up with the ape, with that arrowhead at the top of S2. So you can overlap those and though you don't miss any of the trail. You can actually cut out all 24 of these things and then stick them all together. And you'd end up with a map that's essentially 10 feet long. If we didn't compress certain sections where there really isn't anything to stop at, uh, this whole trail system would be five times longer. You'd have a map that's 50 feet long instead of 10 feet long. So that's the reason we did that. It's just to consolidate uh, and conserve space so we don't have a map that's just too big to try to handle. Again, that's the reason we cut it into four sections. I zoomed in on Loveland. I thought you want to yeah. say something about. As far as Loveland, uh, that's probably one of the postcard uh, children for a trail town. If those of you have been through Loveland, it is a wonderful town full of bistros and restaurants, bike shops. We lost you, Jody. And- uh, I'm back, but I got to share again. But Loveland is an amazing place. Uh, just a really, really neat town. And uh, I think that's part of the Trail Town initiative that I know Jody's working on is, is for other tr uh, small towns, which Loveland isn't a big place, uh, can really reap the benefits of being on these trails if, if they just learn how to uh, market themselves and put in the amenities that's necessary. But as you see, there's another TH in Loveland. So there's another full trailhead in Loveland. So one of the ways you wanna use this map is you're essentially looking for water and restrooms, at least I am when I'm out on these trails. And so any place you see a TH, you know there's gonna be water and a restroom. And from the one in down in Avoca Park to this one, essentially you've gone 12 miles. And so there's a full restroom and water essentially 12 miles apart. So, and, but if you notice there in Milford, they had a restroom and parking, but there's no water right at the trailhead. There is a bike shop in town though, and there's camping. So there's other reasons to perhaps go to Milford, but you're not gonna find water unless you go to a, you know, to a restaurant or a convenience store or somewhere and, and try to get water, but there's no water at the, at the trailhead. So that's, that's essentially how you read the normal map, because it shows you where the amenities are and so forth. The second map is more of the, how you use the map when you need to navigate from one trail to another. In London, you end the Prairie Grass Trail on the western side of London, where that carrot mark is, that orange arrowhead. And then you have about a one mile street route through town. So essentially you come out on Midway Street, you go down West High Street, turn down Main Street, go across First Street, which happens to have a restaurant, which has a bike self-service station in front of it, which is why that icon is there. You turn down Walnut Street and you're gonna pick up Roberts Pass, which is the next trail. So we can see that. So where we go into cities, the scale changes considerably. So between those two marks, that's only a mile. And then you see the mark from there over to Wilson Road, that's six and a half miles, but it's just trail. There's nothing out there. So there's no reason to show you an extended six and a half mile length when we can compress that and put it onto a smaller map. At Wilson Road is where you switch from Roberts and all the trails are marked on this map, as you can see, it says Roberts Pass, and once you get the Wilson Road, it changes to the Camp Chase Trail. 
So the trailhead there, which has restrooms and a parking lot, no water, is where you switch from one trail to another. But it's what we've been able to accomplish is getting these trails to actually grow together. So you have no streets or road of having to traverse in order to go from one trail to the next. And then you see the next TH is there in uh, Patel Darby Creek Park. Okay. So again, you have water restrooms wherever you see one of those TH uh, icons. So I'll move on here. Okay. Again, this one is, shows the same thing. This is coming into, Cle or into Columbus on the west side. So the Camp Chase Trail, they've just finished all the trail that used to have to ride along Georgesville Road, which was kind of nasty and it had a pretty bad uh, railroad crossing you had to maneuver. That's all now nice trail through there. Goes past the new casino there where it says Camp Chase Trail. And then you end at Eureka Avenue. That's the end of the Camp Chase Trail. And you see that's a seven mile distance across there. Seven miles to Wilson Road Park. Another two miles up to Eureka Avenue. And then it shows a long stretch, which is only one mile. But again, we always blow up the areas where you have to ride on a road or a street. So here you get on Eureka, turn on to Valley View. That becomes Harper. You cross Mc, uh, Kinley Road. And then you pick up the high hilltop connector that'll take you down onto the lower Scioto Greenway. It takes you right into downtown Columbus. Next one is really shows you how we mark this 17 mile section where you're not on trail. Essentially the Holmes County Trail starts there in Kilbuck, goes through Millersburg, which is a great town. If you're doing overnights, most people overnight in Millersburg, it's a full service town. Uh, it has campground uh, out in, a little bit in the countryside and there's a full trailhead right at the, uh, right where you get off at the hip station there. There is also a bike shops around the Millersburg area, mainly because this is, you're in the middle of Amish country and you're gonna see a lot of ladies in long dresses and bonnets riding around on their Pedego electric bicycles. <laughs> it's, a, it's really a hoot to ride through here. It's, it's really fun. You'll see actually on the, even on this road, when you go from Fredericksburg to Apple Creek, on the streets we ride on, which are all county roads, you will see more horse and buggies than you will see automobiles. So it's, it's actually a very fun, and a lot of people call it the most uh, beautiful part of the trail because you're, you know, you're not on a rail trip here. You're actually riding on streets, or you're riding on county roads, you're going past these gorgeous uh, Amish farms. And there is a little ups and downs. So it's, it's a little different than riding the flat uh, rail trails all the time. So, you can see it's eight, six and a half miles from Fredericksburg up to Apple Creek. And then the last map, uh, bottom here, takes you from Apple Creek up to Dalton. And again, these, there's not much out on these county roads. And so this 17 mile section, uh, you can, the reason we go through Apple Creek is it, it is a, a small town has some great Amish bakeries in it. And there's also gas stations and, and uh, restaurants and ice cream parlors. And so it's a great place to stop if you're on a day trip. There's no really hotels in the town, so it's not a place you can stay overnight. And as far as I know, there's no camping in that area, but it's a neat little town that's halfway through this uh, street area that allows you to take a break, you know, buy water at the BP station that's right on the corner. And, uh, and then continue on to Dalton, which is where you pick up the next trail, the Sippo Valley Trail, which runs you right into Madison. And then from there, you're on the, essentially the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath, as it says, and you ride that towpath for the next 67 miles right mm -hmm. to Cleveland. So that's just the highlights. That's six out of the 24 sections of the map. And so, from there, I think if we want to go to the interactive map, so that's essentially the old school, which is to me the, the bulletproof way of, of riding on the trail. Uh, I'll bring it up. Just give me a second here.
I'm going to try to take just about another 10 minutes so we hit leave about 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end. So that's the paper way of, of, of planning for the trail. And to me, that's the information that's on the maps and, and the distances that it shows. That is the real way you want to schedule if you're going to ride for a week or for multiple days. You need to really figure out your trail, where you're getting on, where you're getting off, where you're staying overnight, where you are if you're camping, and then where the restrooms are, where the water fill stations are, all that can be found on those paper maps. So now the interactive map, the whole different story. Uh, this we put up on the website in October of 2018. And so far there's been over a half a million views of this. So obviously there's people looking at it. You wanna scroll down to where the map actually is. And we can blow it up a little bit bigger. Hopefully everybody who's been on our website has come and looked at this thing. Essentially what it is, it's a, it's a pure Google map with our route over, essentially put over the top of it. The, uh, if you click on the uh, legend there, there's 10 layers that Google allows you to put onto their maps. And so we've used all 10 layers here, but if I turned all 10 layers on at once, it would be a mess. So don't you turn that off again for a second. But the things that we leave up here all the time are the routes itself. And if you click on the, where it says 45 more, there's more than 50 pieces to this. And so they're mostly listed by the trails. Uh, don't click on any one of those, it'll jump you to a uh, map. But if you wanna go ride, you know, the Camp Chase Trail, if you click on Camp Chase, number one, it'll show you where it is. And then you can go back, uh, don't do that. <laughs> I won't, I won't. Uh, yeah, and then you can know that section. Uh, just scroll on down to where the uh, detour is. The one things we try to, to do live on this, on this uh, interactive map is to show if there's any major construction areas or detours that people are gonna have to go on. So in the Maslin area, if you wanna blow up the, the map now for that, where that Canton area is. Okay. Uh, look, should I undo this? Yeah, just, just blow it up, yeah. Blow it up. Blow it up. <laughs> oh, I see it, purple. Yeah, it's purple and, and, go and gold. What we've done is the gold section is actually where the normal towpath is. That section is closed and it's been closed for probably a year now. And I don't know how much longer it's gonna stay closed, but there is a, a very simple route. You essentially go over the Cherry Street Bridge, you go up Third Street, then you come back in Lake Avenue and you end up right at Ernie's Bike Shop, which is a great place to end up because there's a bike shop there, there's a deli and there's a great blue hair and ice cream shop. So it's a wonderful place to stop and take a break. But that's those kinds of, of detours and routes for detours are what we try to keep on this map that we can't show on a printed map. So if there's, and then the other one, if you want to go back to the, uh, to the legend again. And, and take it back to the full map. And, and yeah, and then go up to where it says bridge, bridge closures. Yeah, there's then just click all items. There's two bridge closures and they're at both ends of the trail. There's one in Cleveland, uh, and if people know where the Center Street Swing Bridge is, which is the old red swing bridge down on the river, that bridge was closed in January or this month, and it's gonna stay closed until this coming October. It's being closed for 10 months, and they're totally re redoing the bridge. And so some people like to take the, the towpath all the way down into the Platts area, and then come across Center Street and then pick up the trail again. 
over on Detroit Street. Well, between now and October, you're not gonna be able to do that because that bridge is closed. The other bridge that's closed is the Purple People Bridge and anybody from Cincinnati knows what the Purple People Bridge is. It's a old railroad bridge that goes from Newport, Kentucky across the river over into Cincinnati, right at the Red Stadium. A lot of people stay in Newport or overnight before they start the trail and always used to come across that bridge to start the ride. Uh, that's not possible either. Uh, that bridge had some issues last year. They have closed it essentially uh, for the near future. And so you have to essentially, if you're staying on the Kentucky side of the river, you're gonna to have to come across the Roebling Bridge, which is actually just as fun a bridge to come across as the Purple People Bridge. But uh, don't expect to ride across the Purple People Bridge if you're in Cincinnati. Uh, so that's, those are, those are kind of, and click on the Friends of the Trail since you did talk about Friends of the Trail. Yeah, that sounds uh, good. I was hoping to do that. That one, if you, Kind of blow it up again you'll see we've essentially highlighted where all of the friends of the trail are located along the trail and you'll notice there anything from beer steins to coffee cups to bicycle shops the beer sign means it's a it's a kind of a craft beer place which a number of people look for uh, a lot of the cup, coffee cups or coffee uh, houses there is a few campsites along here there's some uh then there's, I, I assume that once a lot of the people understand that they can get their location on this map, we'll see a lot more people wanting to join the Friends of the Trail. Because on, on a weekend, there's a thousand people that look at this map on a daily basis. Since and, Louis on the call, I thought I'd show his bed and breakfast there. there you go. Right, at, right in Akron at the top of the hill. So uh, yeah. So that's, and a lot of these, and if you click on one of those, click on it again there, Jody, what it uh, what shows you is it gives them their name, their address, phone number, and it, and it has their website. So you click right on the, at this level, you can click on that website and probably make a reservation. So again, this, this map is very useful, but I wouldn't use it to try to navigate the route. This is more for what's, out there and available or what kind of detours you might know of or just where the various trail sections are, but it's not really meant for navigation. And now go back and click on the, the trailheads. This is the reason this whole trail, this why this map was made in the first place. Turn the, uh, turn the other stuff off. No, oh, friends of the trail. Yep, it's hard. When there's so much yeah. yeah now you can reduce that what you see these are the major trailheads where you can have access to the trail and so go down and click on the one for the patel darby creek okay what it'll, what it'll do is it, it, all these has a photograph of what what it looks like so you know when you're there and if you click on the turn arrow signal, because this is a Google map, it will actually navigate you to that location. And since we have Jody is on the phone, <laughs> go up to, well, maybe you don't have, you're, well, this isn't on her. If this was on, if she was using this on her smartphone, it would show where her location currently is and take her navigate, actually voice navigation in your car will take you right to that uh, trailhead. So that was the main purpose for making this map in the first place was to, is to essentially have people navigate to where those trailheads were so there was a place to park and they could start riding on the trail. Okay. I'm, I'm pretending I live in London, but... <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Let's. Uh, I want to just touch on the GPS maps just for a second. Oh, that's sure. yeah, the best way to, to, to use this interactive map is to just go out there and play with it and uh, learn what it can do. It, it has all kinds of features and options out there. You 
you can't hurt it, so you can just click on anything you want and play with it. So if you, you know, go back to the interactive map page. Sorry, so every time my computer overloads, it boots me out, but I will pull that up in a second. But uh, the last thing I want to talk about is what we put out here for the more uh, technically advanced folks who like to ride with cycling computers. Uh, we've put out here GPS routes for the four sections, the south, south central, north central, and north. And you can download these ride with GPS maps and either use those with the GPS uh, app on your phone, or you can download them to a Garmin type unit. And if you have, if you pay for the ride with GPS uh, navigation option, it'll, it'll give you uh, verbal turn by turn directions, just like what it does in your car. So you click on just the north section there. Uh, and again, anybody can click on these. And, and this part of the ride with GPS is free. So anybody can get out here. You don't have to pay for anything on the app. You can download the app for free and, it, and you'll get these kind of maps. And it actually shows you the elevation map of what you're going through. This happens, all those little spikes there, that's the uh, fun section through the Amish country on the, on the roads. Uh, the steepest stuff is, is only about 5% grade and it's only for less than a mile. So it's, it's nothing that a nice walk can't take care of. But the key to this, if you're not wanna use all the technical stuff is it will generate a complete cue sheet so it'll give you the turn by turn in cumulative mileage for the whole trail. And you can print that off and use it and it doesn't cost you anything. So that's a freebie that's out there on this, on this website. And if you do have a Garmin unit, you can export any, all these to Garmin and then you can use your Garmin, which again will give you the turn by turn navigation if you have like a 500 or 800 series Garmin unit. So that's with that all in, and we can save time for some questions and answers. Good job, Bob, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Bob. That's uh, excellent. And, and Jody, you too, for showing us around the website a little bit. It's, it's, it's a, there's a lot of information out there on the website and uh, the mapping is incredible and just a really tremendous resource for anybody to use to to find their own um, their own trip and adventure um I, I think at this point we do want to open it up to questions um we we have a number of them in the chat that i've i can ask or if anybody wants to unmute themselves you know, feel free and we can uh, ask our panel any questions I'll, I'll bring the, up the pl plan your trip page. Sorry. Okay. Do you have the Center Street Bridge detour? Uh, I can put it out there. But uh, as long as you have it, okay. Actually, if you follow our route, you don't need the, the bridge detour because our route doesn't go over that bridge. Yeah, so I guess here's a few of the questions we got. Um, um, is, there a, uh, is there a shuttle service um, for people who want to do the whole trip and they need a ride back to their destination? Or their, go to, I guess, the, go to the, the Friends of the Trail page and the top item on it is the fellow, is the, is the fellow uh, folks. I'm going to pull it up. I'm looking for a <laughs> quick link, but... Here, friends along the trail. Yeah. There. Oh, also destination and itineraries. There, first one, bicycle transport. Excellent. That's um, the one I'm aware of. There used to be an Ohio shuttles, but they retired last year. So this is the one I'm aware of, is the fellow, uh, Vegas Bellows. Great. There's Louie. I'm just showing all the friends of the trail there. there yeah. That's the only shuttle service that's currently in our list of friends. 
What about a uh, question was asked, do we have a recommendation on which direction, northbound or southbound? And okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to answer that. Uh, <laughs> actually, you'll see it, there's a little blurb on this uh, plan your trip page near the bottom that talks about the prevailing winds in Ohio. And uh, the prevailing winds in Ohio is out of the Southwest. And since if you go from Cincinnati to Cleveland, you're going to the Northeast. So that tells you that typically you're gonna have a tailwind if you go North. Yeah. Bob, could you tell us a little bit more about the Moffat Memorial Ride? Sure, Moffat Memorial Ride is actually named after Tom Moffat, Dr. Tom Moffat, who was president of this organization for I think 19 years. Uh, very good friend of mine. He's the one who actually wrote me into starting doing the maps. Uh, and uh, he passed away in uh, 2018, right after the, that ride, we used to call it the adventure ride. And then after he passed, we uh, renamed it the Moffat Memorial Ride. It's, we ride every year on the week after Labor Day. So if Labor Day is always on a Monday, the ride starts that next Saturday. So this year, that's the 10th of September. We start in Cincinnati and we ride for seven days to all the way to Cleveland. So we do the full 326 miles. We have, we ride seven days. We we overnight six nights. We stay in hotels all of those nights. And we've already negotiated with those hotels for special rates, which some are quite, quite good discounts. And uh, you can see the itinerary there. The longest day is the first day. We get that out of the way right away. And so we go from Cincinnati all the way to Xenia. And then the next day we go from Xenia over to Columbus. And then we go from Columbus to Mount Vernon, stay in a beautiful hotel called the Grand Hotel. At least this year, I think we might get everybody in there. Last year, it's, it only has 46 rooms. So <laughs> you gotta kind of get there early to get a room. Uh, then we go stop in Millersburg. Then we go to Maslin at the Hampton Inn. Then we actually have a very short day. We only go for 30 miles to Akron. But the key to that day is if you keep going, and you go downhill for 16 miles into the park, into the national park and go to Peninsula. You can then ride the uh, train back up to Akron and it stops right at the hotel. So you can actually ride 45 miles, plus get a really neat train ride in. And if you have a bicycle, the train only costs $5. So that's kind of a highlight of the trip for a lot of people was we get to do a bike ride and a train ride that day. Then the last day we ride down to the route to the lake in Cleveland. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I, one thing I've started to see is already this year, we opened up the uh, registration in the middle of December. And on the first day that we opened up the ride, I think 20 people from last year's ride signed up again. <laughs> so it, it more than I'd almost half filled up on the first day with folks yeah. who wanted do it again. So uh, I know some of you folks are out there listening. So thank you for coming to ride us again this year. We had a we had a great time. We also had tailwinds almost every day. Yes. We had we had 15, 20 mile hour tailwinds a lot of days. So we had a lot of smiling people during the ride. So yeah, that, that I think I, I that's enough for one answer. <laughs> yeah. Let me that's show great. this destination and itineraries page too, just while you're speaking. Yeah. Yeah, what we put together is, is a five, six, seven day, or actually from a three to a seven day, eight day ride, breaking it up into equal sections, but putting it someplace where we knew there was actually hotels. So these are all where there's hotels. Uh, if you're going to camp, especially primitive camp, there's a lot more opportunities to break this up different ways. But if you want to stay in hotels, this is kind of the way you've got to break it up. Yeah, well, that leads me to the next question, actually. Um, trailside camping. Well, uh, somebody asked if, if it's legal. Can you explain a little bit how that works? Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a, 
there's the do it and don't tell anybody stealth camp that I know a lot of people do. Matter of fact, they even talk, talk about it on Facebook, but there's not too many, uh, I, I guess, uh, camp police out there who are, who are stopping folks. But uh, there are more every year, there's more and more campsites available. Actually, the, the next version of this, uh, of the trail guide, we're gonna add another whole panel onto the trail guide. It's gonna be seven panels instead of six. And it's gonna have a listing of all of the, on all the campsites and campgrounds, at least all the legal ones. And uh, it'll have essentially what's on this list here. We're gonna actually show it on the map. So people who just have the map and maybe don't have a phone available, it'll show them where these campsites actually are by, by coordinates. So you can actually find it instead of trying to decipher where that is on the map. That's a new, that's gonna be a new feature on, on the new trail guides coming out this summer. Yeah. I launched the PDF of the camping. Is that showing up on the screen? Yeah. Yes, okay. it is. But there's everything out there. There's everything from, uh, you know, people who actually have run campgrounds where you can actually rent a, a shelter or pitch your own tent all the way down to some of the primitive camping that's along the towpath where you just stop, throw your tent down and sleep for the night. Uh, none of them have any water and a lot of them don't even have a porta potty that's within walking distance. So extremely primitive camp uh, in some of these areas. We want to give a shout out to our friends at the Madison County Parks and Trails that they've done a oh, great yeah. job with the primitive uh, campsite in London. It's right along the prairie grass trail. There's a shelter, there's electric, there's camping that's, pads. And that's a little better than primitive because they have actually restrooms and uh, water and a what they call a rustic shower yes. where you can use the <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a spray can that you can use. So I'd call that uh, almost almost a campground rather than a campsite. But that is, and it's free. What's really neat about that one, it's probably the most used campsite anywhere on our trail. And it's right on the edge of London, right at the end of the uh, Prairie Grass Trail. They've had people from all over the world stay there because they have a sign-in book. And they've had people from France, Germany, a lot of the European countries have camped there overnight yeah it's a great one hopefully jody can pull up pictures um of it it's it's an impressive campsite for sure okay. this is and their it, website yeah our challenge is to try to get more uh cities to try to uh figure out how to do this type of campground yeah okay. yeah one of one of our questions was this maintenance of the trail and who who does that and i think i can answer that it's you know, Bob mentioned all the different jurisdictions and really each one is responsible for constructing and maintaining and cleaning their their particular section. In Delaware County, where kind of I represent, we have four different jurisdictions. So the, the trail is all tied together, but it's uh, each each local township or village or park system kind of maintains their own trail section. And they, re and they require, I think there's a lot of trail groups in some of those areas where they're uh, welcome all the volunteer help they can get to with that maintenance, because it's more than just cutting grass, it's, it's trimming back all the honeysuckle <laughs> that tends to grow well in Ohio, and, uh, and other things such as that. Yeah, friends groups are huge. Um, a lot of these rural communities don't have a whole lot of staffing to maintain these, so they're out there with chainsaws and mowers and cleaning and sweeping these trails off all the time. So anybody who wants to find a place to volunteer to do some good, those are great places to volunteer. Yeah. All right, we'll wind it down here. Uh, one last question, uh, Bob uh, or Jody. How much uh, of the trail is paved versus like uh, a crushed gravel or other loose material? Okay. Uh, actually, I'm, we won't go there, but if you go back to the, inter if you go onto the interactive map and you look at the very last level of the interactive map, it has the amount, it shows what parts of the trail are not paved. 
Essentially, there's a one section, about a three mile section on the Sippo Valley Trail that's not paved. And then there's a few, then there's three or four different sections on the towpath that aren't paved. But all of the other trails, and of course, all the streets and roads, everything else is paved. So my guess is it's got to be well into the 90, 85 to 90 percent range that's paved. And then, even, and then what they call not paved, these areas of the of the towpath, it's not gravel. Don't think of it as gravel. Essentially, it's a very fine uh, limestone, almost a crushed, almost a powdered limestone mixed with clay. And when it's dry, it's almost smoother to ride on than some of the paved sections. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's easily ridden with a road bike. Now that's... I that changes if you've had three days of rain. Uh, it gets a little slick in space places. But again, I've, I've ridden the trail. Actually, Matt said I've ridden it twice. Actually, I've ridden it a couple two times a year for a couple of years since 2018. So I've ridden the trail probably 10 times. Mm. I, and I've ridden it all, every time I've ridden it on a 520 Trek uh, touring bike with 28 uh, centimeter or millimeter tires on it. So I'm, I'm riding a standard road bike. I've ridden the trail multiple, multiple times. Matt, it, Matt no, and Bob, it, well, I wanted to just point people to the 326 Club. Um, okay. I'm showing that. So yes, the 326, that's our mileage. So if you do do the whole trip uh, in consecutive days, let us know and uh, send us a photo and your hometown and we will put you on the website and um i think you can get a sticker with any other purchase in our in our right. website right. i'm sorry in our in our store but i was looking for the link i think is it at the top yeah it's at the top yeah right there the little green line it says no that's the featured people yeah oh. no i'll have to find out Fill out where it says fill out the form in the first sentence. Where's it say that? Ah, there we go. Thank you. Fill out this form. Should I click it? When I when I notice people who who post on the on the Facebook page that they've completed the tour, I'll, I tend to send them one of these forms. So if I, if I see your name somewhere that you finished this, you may get a note from me and along with a. <laughs> Personal congratulations too, I see. Exactly. All right, well, I think we're at eight o'clock. Um, I want to, on behalf of the Hard Deer Trail Board, just thank everybody for coming and listening and having showing interest in our wonderful trail. And thanks to Jody and Bob for presenting on all these uh, great resources. Um, again, remember, we will have this on our YouTube channel, so you'll be able to listen again or send it to friends. Um, our next webinar is on February 15th. It's called 326, 326 Miles, We Did It. It's going to be a panel of cyclists that share their stories as they've ridden the Hard Erie Trail. So that should be a really fun one to tune into and listen. Um, you know, all this information that you see today is on our website, ohioderietrail.org. So go check it out. And, um, Thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll see you out on the trail. Thank you.